Everywhere you look nowadays, the price of a decent house is skyrocketing, not just in the cities, but all across the United States. And truth be told, it doesn't look like there's any end in sight. Well, with the cost of housing on the rise all across America, many prospective home buyers might wish they had an option that was available to pioneers. Now, spending the night or a weekend in a stump house might sound like an outdoor adventure or a neat camping trip, but in the 1800s, as European pioneers pushed inward towards the mountainous regions of Appalachia and towards the west coast of America, suitable housing was at a premium to say the least. You see, in Appalachia, logging companies were cutting down massive 800-year-old chestnut trees that towered 200 feet in the air and were in excess of 15 feet in width. And out west, the massive sequoias and redwoods were also being felled. Once these trees were harvested for their lumber, a massive stump would be left behind. And because trees like the chestnut were rot resistant and cedar trees were insect resistant, their stumps was guaranteed to last for at least 100 years after they were cut down. Many of these stumps became centerpieces in communities where political rallies, elections took place. Each aspiring politician would take his place high atop the stump and with a confident booming voice, he would make countless promises and tell countless lies that he swore he would carry out if he were only elected. Well, now that I think about that statement, Ain't nothing changed there, but that is where the term stump speech came from. But these stumps weren't confined to political rallies. No, sir. Many good times could be found here, where a fiddler would position himself in the center of a massive stump and fire up a homespun version of Arkansas Traveler. And before you knew it, the entire stump would be filled with dozens of dancers. Indeed, these stumps make the perfect spot to host community events. But what many folks don't realize is that it was common for folks to also live in these stumps. That's right, find yourself a hollowed out tree stump, slap on a tin roof and throw in a bed and a table. And just like that, it was home sweet home. Now you might be thinking, how could a family live in a stump? There's not enough room. Well, my friend, these early pioneers were genius. Most trees were always cut 10, 15 feet above the ground because the wood closest to the earth contained many knots and grew twisted. Hollowing out a stump was no small feat, but the pioneers were determined. With pickaxes and hand tool, they carefully carved out living spaces within the soft interior of the stumps, creating rooms as spacious as 20 feet wide. And they would fix them up right nice, adding windows and doors, fireplaces, and many other amenities. Some of them were even two and three stories tall offering private bedrooms for each family member. Best of all, there wasn't any mortgage or rent to pay. In a time when most Appalachians didn't have any money, the idea of owning a home without the associated costs was a dream come true. The stump houses became a symbol of self-sufficiency, a place where families thrived without being beholden to landlords or banks. Beyond serving as residences, Stump houses became versatile structures. Some pioneers used them to shelter chickens and other animals, taking advantage of the protective barrier provided by the massive root systems and thick walls. Others utilized stump houses as temporary living quarters while clearing land and constructing more permanent log cabins. The adaptability of these structures showcased the pioneer's ability to make the most of their resources. As more and more folks migrated to these mountains, public buildings became necessary. And since Appalachians have a long history of not wanting to donate any of their money to politicians, 
it was common for these stumps to be used as post offices. These unconventional post offices were not just functional, they were a reflection of the community's commitment to preserving its heritage and making the best of what was available. And that, my friend, is ingenuity at its finest. Yes, sir, these stump houses became iconic and were even featured on 27 United States postcards over the years. These iconic images captured the essence of a bygone era, immortalizing the stump houses as symbols of resilience and innovation. And it was common for folks to live in them in the 1930s, and there are records of old timers living in them all the way through the 1960s. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if some of you watching this video right now know of someone who lived in a stump house. If you do, let me know in the comments below. So you see, my friends, the legacy of these stump houses extended far beyond mere shelter, and they are yet another reminder of the unbroken spirit of Appalachians. They were symbols of resilience and resourcefulness in the face of challenging circumstances. Till next time, my friends, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more true stories from Appalachia's past.